Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I am going to explain an Indian comedy drama film called Bajrangi Bajan. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. In the hills of Sultanpur, Pakistan, lives a six-year-old mute girl named Shahida. One afternoon, she is playing on a hill when she accidentally falls off of it. When she doesn't return home by the end of the day, the villagers organize a search party. After hours of searching, they find the little girl on a branch protruding from the hill. She had been stuck on it for the entire day, but couldn't call for help because of her disability. The following morning, her parents and neighbors discuss what must be done to help her. An older man suggests they take her to the shrine of Sufi saint Nizamuddin Aliya in Delhi, India. The religious family believes that a visit to the holy shrine will bring peace and happiness and, most importantly, restore Shahida's speech. Shahida's father used to be in the military and has fought against the Indian army. He is sure that he won't be provided with a visa to India. Hence, her mother, Razia, takes it upon herself to travel far from the village for the first time. The trip goes as planned for the most part. The two reach the shrine, pay offerings, and get on a train back to their home country. On the return journey, the train stops for repairs at night. When everyone is asleep, Shahida notices a lamb stuck in a pit right outside the train. She doesn't think twice before going outside to help the animal. However, the train restarts before she can return to her mother. The little girl runs towards it but is eventually left behind. In a desperate attempt to go the same way that her mother did, she boards a freight train. But to her dismay, it goes in the opposite direction and stops in Kurukshetra, India. Razia notices her daughter is missing and stops the train. Policemen are appointed to look for the girl around the tracks where she was lost. However, they cannot find her since Shahida has already reached a different place. Razia meets her husband, who is worried to death about his daughter. They cannot get an immediate visa back to India, much to their dismay. The parents have no other way but to pray that their daughter is safe. Meanwhile, Shahida is now lost in a different country with no way to communicate. In a religious celebration, she sees a stranger eating at a street-side restaurant. The stranger is the kind Pawan Kumar Shatravedi, who invites her to have a meal with him. After a few minutes of trying to get her to talk, he realizes that she is mute and starts calling her money. A starving money finishes the food and follows Pawan around. Assuming that she was separated from her parents during the festival, he asks her to stay in front of a temple. Pawan is a devout Hindu Brahmin and an ardent devotee of Lord Hanuman. He believes that Lord Hanuman will take money home if she stays in front of his temple. When money still doesn't stop following him, he brings her to the police station. But since she cannot tell them any details about her parents, the police can only wait for someone to file a missing complaint. Don't these people have pen and paper? Until her parents are found, Money needs a place to stay. Hence, Pawan takes her in. On the way to his home in Delhi, he tells Money to call him Mama if she ever talks in the future. He also starts naming different Indian cities, asking her to nod if she knows what city her parents are in. All the passengers on the bus help him, but none of them name cities outside of India. As they talk, Pawan tells everyone how he came to Delhi for work. A flashback shows the time he was in high school. He was an average student who could never pass the final examination. All his friends cheated and went on with their lives, but Pawan refused to cheat or lie, being a true devotee of Lord Hanuman. Eventually, he passed on his 11th try and came to Delhi to look for work. He stayed with his father's friend, Pandi, a strict Hindu who refused to let the followers of any other religion enter his house. Pandi's daughter, Rasika, offered Pawan a job at the school she taught at and fell in love with his innocent persona. But being the strict father he is, Pandi asked Pawan to build his own house before marrying his daughter. Ever since then, Pawan and Rasika have been working hard to collect money. The two are bound to get married sometime next year. Everyone on the bus is impressed by his story. He and Money reach his home, where Rasika receives them in the doorway. She is glad that Pawan is helping a little girl in need, but Pandi doesn't feel the same way. He is worried about the possibility that Money belongs to a different religion. Pawan rationalizes that she is Hindu because of her fair skin color and persuades Pandi to let her stay for a month. Money cries every day in the memory of her parents, even though Pawan and Rasika treat her like their own daughter. Since the entire family is vegetarian and Money is accustomed to eating meat with every meal, she hardly ever finishes her food. 
One day, Pawan and Rasika find her in a Muslim neighbor's home, devouring home-cooked chicken. Pawan brings her to a restaurant that evening and lets her eat whatever she likes, even though eating meat is against his religion. Money is very fond of the glittery bangles they sell on the street side. One day, while walking through a market, she innocently picks up a pack of bangles before being stopped by the vendor. Pawan makes her return it and takes her to the temple to apologize to God for stealing. As he teaches her to join her hands, money sneaks into a mosque nearby. Pawan is hesitant to follow her inside, but he does it anyway. To his utter surprise, he sees her reading the Quran in front of a shrine. For a few minutes, he feels like she betrayed him because he would have never befriended a Muslim. But Rasika makes him realize that she is a human before she is a Muslim. She hates that her father discriminates against people because of their religion and wants Pawan to be different. Pawan understands and runs into the mosque to get money, but by now, she has already left. As he nervously looks for her, she runs to him and hugs him tightly. At that moment, he accepts her entirely, overcoming his irrational fear of going against his religion. That night is a cricket match between Pakistan and India. The entire family watches it on TV, cheering for India, except Money, who cheers when Pakistan scores. When the Pakistani team wins the game, she dances and kisses their flag through the TV. Pawan approaches her and asks if she is from Pakistan. After weeks of shaking her head to every Indian city, Money finally nods, yes. Pandi is furious. Being a Muslim was bad enough, but since the girl is from Pakistan, he can no longer allow her to stay at their home. Pawan promises to hand her to the Pakistani embassy the next day. However, the embassy worker cannot allow her a visa without a passport. In Money's case, they don't even know her real name, so a visa allotment is impossible. Moreover, a riot takes place in front of the embassy that closes all visa processing for a month. As a last resort, Pawan takes her to a travel agent at Pandy's suggestion. The agent promises to take the little girl to the other side of the border and asks for one lakh rupees. Pawan and Rakasa give up the funds they had collected for their house to help money. The next day, Pawan reluctantly brings money to the travel agent's office and leaves after a tearful farewell. On his way home, he notices a street vendor selling glittery bangles. He remembers that money liked them and buys one for her. However, on returning to the travel agent's office, he finds out that he has been cheated. The agent has taken the little girl to a brothel and is about to sell her into prostitution. The otherwise composed Pawan loses his temper at the sight of the agent counting bills that he made for money. He throws the man out of the window and brings money home again. Pawan has made the decision to bring money home himself. Although he has no connections or ideas about Pakistani villages, he packs his bag and makes his way to the border. A few miles away from it, they meet a secret agent named Ali, who illegally transports people to the other side through a tunnel. After listening to Money's story, he agrees to take them for free. When they reach Pakistan's side of the border, Ali runs away, but being a devotee of Lord Hanuman, Pawan refuses to go without asking the guards for permission. When the officers find him, they beat him up as Money watches and cries. Pawan pretends to laugh even while being beaten so the little girl wouldn't be afraid. After finding out the reason for his travel, the head soldier asks him to do whatever he wants in the following 10 minutes before they return for the next round. Pawan decides to wait for them because they have still not permitted him to leave. Although the idea is idiotic and he gets beat up again, he is eventually allowed to go with permission from the soldiers. In the following scene, he and Money are in a restaurant. Money sees a cop's handcuffs and steals them, assuming that they are a bracelet. The cop finds out and throws Pawan in jail, labeling him as an Indian spy because of the lack of a passport. Then, we are introduced to a struggling journalist, Chand Nawab. He finds out about the alleged spy and runs to the police station to interview him. He gets a few vague answers from Pawan and informs the media company that he doesn't take him seriously. Inside the police station, a cop interrogates Pawan but refuses to believe anything he has to say. Suddenly, Money sees a picture on a table calendar and recognizes it as her village. Pawan is overjoyed until the policeman forcefully makes Money open her mouth. Pawan loses his temper and attacks the man, inviting even more trouble for himself. He manages to defeat the officers and run away from the police. Nawab sees him escaping and follows him. They board the bus where Pawan shows the conductor their destination and also tells him Money's story. 
After finding out he is actually a good person, Nawab and the rest of the travelers decide to help him. They hide him and money on top of the bus when the police come looking for them. At night, Nawab, Pawan, and money stay at a mosque. A religious scholar named Azad also helps them and hides them from the policeman searching the entire city for the alleged spy. One of Azad's students sees Switzerland written on the picture that Money thought was her village. The group is back to square one. After that, Azad dresses up Pawan and Nawab in a burqa and manages to send them outside the city without the police noticing. Pawan, who was oblivious to Isam a few weeks ago, feels strange in their traditional clothing. He apologizes to his god, but is ready to do anything for money. With that attitude, Pawan could become a rapper. For the next few days, Pawan and Nawab take money to several different places, asking people if they know her. Nawab documents their journey and everything about money and Pawan's relationship. He tries selling the documentary to news channels, but they refuse to air it, claiming that it is boring. They have to find another way to spread the news so the people on the internet can help. One day, they go to a famous mosque where they find policemen looking for them. Nawab realizes that his cameraman friend is being used by the police to gather information about their whereabouts. The trio immediately runs away from the holy place and gives the cameraman false information to distract the police. Following that, the group is reviewing the footage from their time at the mosque when Money recognizes her mother in one of the clips. They see her getting into a specific bus and go to that bus driver the very next day. Upon inquiring, he names all the villages that come on his daily route. One of them is Sultanpur, which Money confirms is her home. Nawab and Pawan hug, having finally found their destination. Nawab also uploads the video documentary on YouTube, and the police get a hint of their location through it. On their way to Sultanpur, the bus is stopped to be checked. With no way out, Pawan comes in the police's view and pretends to run away. While the men are busy trying to catch him, Nawab takes Money and brings her back to her village. In the following scene, we see Money run to her mother, who couldn't be happier to see her. As she reunites with her family, somewhere else, Pawan gets beaten up by the police. The documentary on YouTube goes viral, and the bigger news channels start covering the story. Eventually, people find out that Pawan is not a spy and is being held in prison for helping a little girl. Both Indian and Pakistani people give him all of their support, but the Pakistani officials refuse to let him go. They torture him in prison, beating him up for hours, drowning him until his last breath, and starving him. Nawab then claps back with another video, this time on a bigger platform, asking people to gather at the border and ensure that Pawan reaches home safely. The plan works, and several people from both sides come to the border in crowds. Rasika and her family are also among the crowd, waiting for him to come home. Eventually, the officials have to back down. The crowd erupts, chanting Pawan's name as he crosses the border. Then, we see Money among the crowd, waving her hands but unable to call him. All of a sudden, she shouts Mama, the name Pawan wanted her to call him when they first met. The crowd goes silent as she yells goodbye. Pawan turns around in shock. The movie ends as they run to each other and hug. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.